Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod and to the fourth and final episode of the Endless Runner tutorial series. I'm Noah. Our game is almost completely done at this point. There's a cool player, dangerous obstacles, nice little effects. All we need now is some UI, a fun little scoring system and some sounds. So with that said, let's get cracking. So first of all, I wanted to do a tiny bit of cleanup work. As you can see, when I press play, my hierarchy quickly gets clogged up with useless particle effects, faraway obstacles and empty obstacle pattern game objects. This can quickly get the game lagging and as a result, ruin the player's experience. What I want is to destroy this useless junk. So I'll make a little C sharp script called destroyer and open it up. Here I'll make a public float variable called lifetime and in the start function, destroy the game object on which this script is attached to after a certain amount of seconds, which we will soon Simply type out in the inspector. So I'll add this destroyer script to my obstacle prefab and I think it's safe to destroy that after 10 seconds. By then it will be far behind the player. I'll also add it to each obstacle pattern and destroy those after for example 2 seconds. No need for useless empty game objects after all. As for the particle effects, I could add this script to those as well but with Unity 2018 there's a cool little feature that has been added called stop action. I'll choose destroy which will destroy my particle effects once all particles have spawned and disappeared from the scene view. Awesome. With that done, let's create a scoring system. Now there's of course tons of ways to go about doing this. What I'll do is create an empty game object called score manager, move it at the back of the scene and add to it a 2D box collider that I'll scale along the Y axis so it covers up the whole scene as well as set it to trigger. Also add a 2D rigid body set to kinematic so collisions will well be detected. This game object will basically detect whenever an obstacle collides with it and when that's the case the score will increase of 1. So I'll create a new C sharp script called score or manager, drag and drop it onto my game object and open that up in Visual Studio. Inside it I'll make a void on trigger enter 2D function that takes in a collider 2D variable called other. Basically the same function that we made for the obstacle in episode 2 of the series. In this function I'll make an if statement and check whether what the obstacle manager has collided with has the obstacle tag. Something we'll add in just a moment to our obstacle prefab. And if that's the case then I'll want to increase my score. So I'll create an int variable called score and increase it of 1 right here. And then I'll debug.log that value just to make sure things are working smoothly. In Unity, I'll create a new tag called Obstacle, add that to my Obstacle prefab and hit play. And you'll see that my score indeed increases every time an obstacle passes through it. Now let's display that score as well as the player's health with some UI. I'll create a new text UI element, call it Health Display and snap it to the top left corner of my screen. Now if you're completely new to UI and have no clue how to place it properly in your scene, get it working with different screen resolutions and so on, I highly recommend you check out this detailed UI beginner guide I made a few weeks ago. Okay, I can now hop into my player script and add the using unityengine.ui namespace up here, which is required to manipulate anything UI related via code. With that done, I'll make a public text variable called health display and set health display equal to my health value. Don't forget to convert this health int value into a simple string by typing to string because obviously text can only be equal to strings. If not, Unity will throw us a nasty error. I'll now drag and drop that UI text into that empty slot in my player script and hit play. And indeed, my health display text properly displays the amount of health my character has. And now do the exact same for score, typing out the UI namespace, making a text variable, and setting that equal to score.toString. And then duplicate the health display text, call it score display, place it on the other side of the screen and drag and drop it in the inspector in the score manager script. And again, things should work perfectly. Super duper, before adding some sounds, we'll fix one little thing I'm a little bothered with right now, the snappy restart. As soon as the player dies, the game immediately restarts, not leaving any time for the player to take a break and digest his defeat. I'd rather an overlay appeared asking the player to hit the R key for example, 
to restart. So I'll make a UI panel, give it a dark, slightly transparent color, and also make a UI text element on top of that, reading game over, hit R to restart. I'll group those two newly made elements under an empty game object called game over, and add to that a C Sharp script called restart. Here I'll add the scene management namespace and in my if statement, wait for the player to hit R before reloading my current scene using this tricky line of code. Now I'll head over to my player script, remove this line of code which immediately reloads my scene as soon as he falls to zero health, and instead I'll enable the game over game object. To do so I'll make a public game object variable called game over, and then type game over dot set active true to enable it. We'll also destroy the player character. Heading back into Unity, I'll drag and drop that game over object into that empty slot on my player and disable it. And so now when my player falls to zero health, you'll see this panel and text appearing. And I can of course hit R and my scene will reload. That's much better than immediately restarting, which almost felt like a quirky glitch. With all that done, let's make some sounds. You can of course go as crazy as you like with sounds, even make a little background music if you like. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll simply make an explosion sound when my player hits an obstacle and a sort of pop sound when he moves up or down. Just that should make the game feel a whole lot more interesting. Now, I use Audacity to make my sound effects. It's free and pretty cool. I'll just yell in my microphone something that resembles an explosion, perhaps tweak it a little and then export it into my Unity project. There I'll make an empty game object called Explosion Sounds and drag and drop that sound onto it. This will automatically add an audio source component to my object. I'll simply make sure Play on Awake is checked and then turn this into a prefab. Now I simply need to spawn this object whenever my player hits an obstacle and will have a cool explosion sound effect up and running. So I'll open up my obstacle script, create a public game object variable called explosion sounds and instantiate that when the obstacle collides with the player. I can drag and drop that in the inspector on my obstacle prefab test and indeed get a nasty explosion sound whenever I collide with an obstacle. Now, the reason I instantiate a game object instead of simply playing a sound directly from my obstacle is because this way I'm sure the entire sound will play and not get cut off midway through, which is exactly what would happen with the obstacle. Because remember, the obstacle is destroying itself when it collides with the player. Okay, I'll use this same method for the player character, instantiating a little pop sound whenever he moves. Again, this is better than adding an audio source to the player and playing the sound from there, because chances are high the sound will continuously get interrupted and cut off because you'll keep on moving up and down, which obviously will sound choppy, even a little buggy. And that marks the end of this small Endless Runner tutorial series. I hope you had a good time and were able to make your very own little game. If you did, based on this tutorial series, definitely join the Blackthorn Prod Discord server and share with me and others your creation. I'll be more than happy to try it out and give you some feedback. With that said, you can support me and my channel financially via Patreon, which would be so appreciated and encouraging. Hitting the like and subscribe buttons would also be wonderful. Okay, see you very soon for plenty more game dev content. Cheers!